Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Connor, and I'm here to show you guys how to solve the Mega Minx. Now, this is a QJ Mega Minx, and, uh, just to show you guys that it is a QJ Mega Minx, and maybe not Mephords or something. There you go, there's the QJ sign right there. So, that's that. Now, uh, Mega Minx is very similar to a 3x3 cube. Uh, not much, but it kind of is. Uh, there's just 12 sides instead of 6, so you kind of double it. But other than that, it has some similar algorithms to the 3x3, so. Um, and some uh, the algorithms, they're going to be very, like, all over the place with uh, what side I'm talking about. Like, one algorithm, this will be L, and this will be R. Another algorithm, this will be R, this will be L. So just, just follow along as best you can. You can always rewind and go see what the algorithm is and what side I turn. But um, I think that's about it for describing this cube. Now, from the challenge level, uh, from 1 to 5, being 1 uh, is the like easiest and 5 is the hardest, this would probably be a 4 uh, or 3.5. It's up there with the challenging puzzles. But uh, I've solved this like 10 times. And I don't really mess with it as much as I thought I would be, but it's a fun little puzzle. I'll mess up here and there. But enough of me yabbing on about this cube itself. Let's get on to scrambling it. Okay, now that we have scrambled our Mega Minx, we are uh, going to solve uh, the, the white star because uh, that's what the Mega Minx has. It has a star and then corners. So, um, first of all, before we get into the white star, let's notify the edges. The edges are these little triangle pieces, and the corners are these little like uh, diamond almost kind of pieces. Now. Um, then these are centers, of course, and I think that's about it for, for notation about what is each piece. So, um, like like the uh, Rubik's cube, we have a white cross, except we're solving a white star. So uh, we're gonna notify any edge that has white on it. Uh, we're gonna get the screen once it's right here. So all you have to do is rotate it down, rotate it up, just like that. And then we have a red one. It's in the wrong position, but we can just use the three by three algorithm and just bring it across, just like that. So that's in place. And now we have the purple and white. So now, this one, since uh, purple is all the way over here, you have to just rotate it until you get it. And then bring it up. Just like that. So now we have, a, since there's five points, we just have a little, like, then half our star. So uh, let's find, we have the blue and yellow. So... You're gonna have to search a little on the cube. Here's the blue. Rotate it up. Now we just have yellow. Here's yellow. We rotate it around the cube. Probably, probably the part I hate most about this cube is rotating all these uh, centers. Now we have our white star. Now we want to do just like on uh, Rubik's cube. You want to get all your corners in the right spot. Now here's one already, it's the dark green and purple and white. So you turn it over to here, and then you can use just the same algorithm, um, what is it, like R, D, I, R, D. You don't really have to do D move, but a lot of people do. And then you just, here's another one, uh, yellow, dark yellow, because that's what we're working with, and purple. And then you just go R, well, not D, I, because I can modify it a little bit. And here's this one. Here's this one over here. Oopsie, it's locking up now. And then we have one more. Here it is. I can already see what it's going to be, so I can just rotate it up. And there we go. We have our whole white side solved. And then one layer. Just like on the 3x3. Three three. So now what you want to do is you want to put that face down and now you will well, not really face down yet but you want to get it so that you can see all this 
Now what you want to do is you want to notify all the edges that go to it. So we're just going to look for one until we find one that matches. Red and blue. So now we're just going to rotate it around the cube until we get to it. And now, now we have it right here. And now we just do the same algorithm that we've been doing for the uh, for the Rubik's cube. Uh, I think you guys all should know it by now. But uh, I think I'm pretty sure it's U R U I R I U I. And then I don't know. Really, I think this would, yeah, this would be F uh, U U and then F I. So there you go. It's in place. Now, I'm pretty sure I messed up that algorithm, but don't really pay attention to what I said there. Just pretty much look at what I did. Uh, luckily, there'll be more chances to see what I did. So you see here, then we're just going to rotate the top face up, bring this up, bring it across, bring it across again, bring this up, just like that. And now you have this edge pair too. So this is pretty much just a repetitive pr You pretty much do exactly what you did for the 3x3. Um, so we're just going to notify all the rest of them. Now we have one last one. Now this could happen for any of them, but if you get the uh, situation where you do the algorithm, but it goes into the place wrong. Then you're just going to pick any edge, it doesn't really matter. Do the same algorithm again, it doesn't matter what side it's from. Do the algorithm, and then you'll push this one out, bring it back in, do the algorithm, and then it should be back in place. Alright, so that's uh, pretty much all you'll need to know how to solve this in this kind of layer. So uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to move on and uh, pretty much solve all these six sides and solve the first, like, like what we did on this so that there's just this layer is left over. So this is probably the longest process. I'm going to be skipping through a lot because you don't need to see me solve it. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to start with light green because there's different, way different shades. Actually, no, we're going to start with orange. Yeah, we're going to start with orange. So what we're going to do is we're going to notify the uh, purple and orange piece is right here what you want to do is you just want to kind of rotate it around until you can find it fitting into the purple just like that and then I guess you could do the algorithm to get it in place just like this now um, that is pretty much uh, how you get the edges in place for everything but uh, now what we do is we have one edge in place so now what we're going to do is we're going to get a corner in place. Now uh, we're going to notify it, which it is the uh, yellow, uh, purple, and orange piece, which is right here. So we could orient it right here, but we're not going to because it makes it much easier if we do it this way. So look at these pieces. These are all purple, so that means this has to be purple facing down here. So what you're going to do is you're going to rotate it up until you get it just like that and there you go you have this set up and now what you want to do is find the orange and yellow which is right over here and the algorithm and I'm getting your uh, edges in place and there you go you're starting to get all these in place and now what you want to do is you want to get all of your uh, edges in uh, the right spot now this will take a little bit of a process but it's okay because this is a this is a difficult cube to solve. So rotate it like that. Now this is in the wrong spot. You want to get it down here and rotate it. Should know or not? Because that would definitely make it that definitely messed up a lot so we're not gonna do that but uh where is that at light green and yellow here it is so let's rotate it down and what we want to do now is we want to get this piece over here so what we'll do is we'll rotate it up 
Bring some random corner down. And then where'd this one go? Oh, here it is. And now, since this is right here, you know if you turn it down, it's going to be right here. So that's in the right spot. So now you just do this for all of these. You get the second layer solved. And uh, I'll get back to you guys when I am finished with doing that.